<laughs> Flustered yelp. <laughs> as she squeezed me tightly, I felt as though my upper body might collapse under the pressure of her softest parts. <laughs> really? <laughs> I can't read this with a straight face. <laughs> I was blushing uncontrollably. <laughs> Let him go. Aww. <laughs> I struggled and wiggled. I struggled to wiggle free, but Miss Yuri only grabbed me tighter. I guess you're sleeping over tonight, huh? <laughs> She's not gonna let you get away. Our bodies were getting even more entwined. And every time I squirmed, Miss Yuri would just pull me in even closer. <laughs> now something happened. Would this still be unconsensual? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it would be. <laughs> her chest rose and fell erratically. Droplets of sweat slid down her into her cleavage. Eventually she's going to be passing out from being sick, so come on, just bear with it. I could feel the heat of her fever radiating off of her, steadily encroaching on my face as well as my shoulders. I would grabbed in an effort to push her away. <laughs> Questions were swirling around my head. Why was Miss Yuri crying? Who is this Sukasa person? But I was most concerned for the state of her pajamas, which had become even more disheveled during our struggle. <laughs> A single word was getting through to her. I sighed resigningly. I'd taken care of Yuka a number of times when she'd been caught when she'd caught a cold and drawn a fever, but I don't recall her ever getting this bad. Miss Yui was usually calm, collected, rational. Who would have ever imagined a fever could leave her so thoroughly discombobulated? I put a little more strength into my resistance, and finally her arms relaxed the tiniest bit. But her expression changed drastically. Oh, okay, so she's sleeping on the floor. She doesn't have, like, a formal bed. Ah,あの、先生... Mishiri <sighs> was uh, acting like a spoiled child, slipping out of the shoes I'd been wearing. I again drew close to her sprawling out form. <laughs> there was no way I could just leave her like this. <laughs> you really don't want to leave her like that. <laughs> Should we let out a lethargic groan, perhaps, in response to my quiet murmuring? <laughs> At my wit's end, I grabbed hold of her and did the best I could to carry her back into her room. J 
gently will willing her over to her unfurled futon. I then carefully laid her down, making sure she didn't drop I didn't drop her in the process. Then there was the matter of rebuttoning those pesky pajamas. I hesitantly pulled up her pajama bottoms, brushed away the stray hairs that were plastered to her brow with sweat. I had done my best to avoid seeing anything I shouldn't, but I'm a guy, so while my heart was pounding the whole time, Mishiri's pajamas were soaked through with sweat. Ugh. She really might have been better off with changing her clothes altogether, but no, that would have been going way too far. <laughs> Noticing a convenience store bag carelessly tossed on the floor, I glanced inside. Well, she bought cold packs, but then she probably got too crazy to use them. Aw, she's he's got the kitty and teachers in bed. I placed one of the compresses on her forehead and pulled the covers over. Mishui appeared almost instantly relieved. She exhaled. Contently, and her breathing became more relaxed. Finally, she fell asleep. <laughs> Forty minutes of prelude to actually getting back to the story, it seems. Even in sleep, Miss Yuri seemed to be suffering. Oh, Mone. Nanda, Sensei ga shinpai ka? Daina. Ore mo, koko made hidoi koto ni natte ru to wa omawa nakatta yo. She should probably feed Mone as well, you know. Monet had coiled up in my legs without me noticing and began absentmindedly and I began absentmindedly speaking to him. He mewed in response, and our conversation ended there, as my gaze was still fixed squarely on Miss Yuri. Yui. Sate Shioka. Ano Yui sensei. I'd say feed the cat, leave the note. Maybe throw in a thing of chicken noodle soup, leave it by her bedside? Don't wake her up again. She wasn't in any condition to respond. Yui sensei. Aww, Mishiri's hand had slipped out from under her futon and was gently grasping my pant leg. Guess you shouldn't leave. Hope you have your cell phone, kid. Her grip was much weaker than it was before, though. <laughs> But I know I'd probably regret it if I went home now. 
Miss Yui seemed really lonely. <laughs> Without disturbing Miss Yui, holding on to me, I took a seat beside her. For the time being, I figured I'd watch over her and make sure her condition didn't worsen. <laughs> Occasionally, Miss Yui's breathing would become ragged, and she'd furrow her brow. She was in a pretty bad way. Wasn't there anything else I could do? Did she have any uh, cold meds? Tylenol? Something? I glanced quietly down the hallway. I noticed when I carried Miss Yuri here that the kitchen near the entrance was perfectly neat and tidy. There wasn't any indication it had ever been used that day at all. Yes, we should probably not eating. Yeah, like I said, make her chicken noodle soup or something that she can eat. Probably want to feed the cat too because it's probably really friggin' hungry. When A's gaze shifted suddenly, I followed it and saw the pet bowls laid out in the corner of the room. One dish was filled to the brim with water, the other piled high with dry cat food. Oh, <laughs> so she like filled his like overflowing and just like passed out. I shook my head at the whole situation and glanced down at Monet, who was tilting his head up as if trying to understand me. I broke into a wry smile. When I'd pulled out of pulled out the cold packs, I did notice some cheap convenience store food in the bag as well. I guess that was going to be her food for the day. Not exactly the best stuff to eat when you're sick. Egg porridge. I don't know how to make egg porridge. I don't think she's gonna object. Her face was bright red, and her half pained, half content noises provided me with no clear cut answer to my question. Don't ask the cat. Arigato. Monet's cries of assurance helped our um Monet's cries helped. Uh, whatever. <laughs> You got assurance, whatever. No guilt. No guilt over this. Um, we're entering a woman's apartment, borrowing the kitchen, whatever. Not that I had any reason to feel guilty, not to think, don't think so anyway. I mean, circumstances were uh, what they were. Still, I had a nagging sense I should have somehow felt bad about what I was doing. <sighs> Freaking token, good boy. One by one, I gently peeled each of the fingers latched onto my pant leg. Uh, the expression on her face changed as I was doing so. From contented rest to mild annoyance, but nothing indicated she might wake up. Okay, so go make food. Yes. 
How is this pertinent to the story? At all. So I stood up, Monet mewed happily and began tagging along. Oh well, yeah, it's boring watching Miss Yuri. Miss Yui now rested in the bedroom by herself and let out a sudden sneeze. 